in our life. Praise God. We're going to be understanding the hand of God in our life in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Hallelujah. So, the mystery of divine provision, the mystery of divine provision. I want us to open our Bibles in the book of Jeremiah chapter 20, 29 and verses number 11. Jeremiah 29 and verses number 11. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jeremiah 29 and verses number 11. The Bible says, this is Ezekiel. Can we open Jeremiah 29? Thank you. For I know the thoughts that I have toward you. Jeremiah to nine, verses number eleven. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an end, an expected end. I know the thoughts that I think that I have towards you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Thoughts of peace. Hallelujah. Thoughts of peace are not evil. The Bible says to give to you. Somebody say to give me. Say the thoughts of God. Hallelujah. They are to give you an unexpected end. Hallelujah. Open again in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse number 15. Thoughts of peace. Hallelujah. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil. The word peace there is shalom. Shalom means. What does shalom mean? means welfare well fed nothing lacking nothing missing and nothing broken hallelujah and having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it hallelujah having um, having spoiled the principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it hallelujah praise the lord ephesians chapter number four verses eight the mystery of divine provision ephesians chapter number four verses number eight Wherefore is saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am ministering this morning about the mystery of divine provision, the mystery of divine supply. Hallelujah. So in Jeremiah, the Bible tells us, the Bible says, that I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Hallelujah. I know the thoughts that I have toward you. Praise God. One monkey to come and... Okay. I thought I said one day that you wanted to be my protocol. I'll sit close. Hallelujah. I know the thoughts that I have toward you. So now, um, a mystery is a spiritual, it is a divine guarded secret. Okay? What is a mystery? It's a divine guarded secret hidden 
from the mind and the understanding of men and is only accessed through supernatural revelation. Are you following? When you talk about a mystery, it is not a secret. It is something beyond because a secret is that which is hidden from you by another man. Are you following? Or by a system in nature. But when you say we talk about a mystery, this is a divine guarded secret. It's a divine guarded information. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's divinely guarded and protected and hidden from the access of the ordinary physical understanding and knowledge. Hallelujah. And it can only be accessed in time, in its own time, okay? And through revelation. Say, so I hear you. Through revelation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, mysteries are the keys that open seasons of God in man's life. When you want a change in your destiny, when you want a change, hallelujah, what can project you, the projection of the change you are pursuing, can be apprehended when you hold a mystery. So I hear you. Praise God. Anytime a man goes down on his knees, when he pursues God, and when God reveals himself to this man, this man comes out with abilities that are beyond mortality. Praise God. He comes out with a capacity to influence not just his life, but the atmosphere. He is able to shift things. Why? Because he is backed up but by a mystery. There are so many mysteries, friends, in the Bible. When you read scripture, you can access mysteries. Hallelujah. You can access mysteries. So, whatever trouble that has been on your life, if you pursue God and apprehend a mystery, the trouble will live at its own accord without your struggle. Hallelujah. One of the mysteries is the mystery of divine provision. The mystery of divine provision. Hallelujah. Say the mystery of divine provision. Hallelujah. So the word provision is um, I found it in the Greek word pronoia, which simply means it simply means um, pronoia, hallelujah. Pronoia, which means this is a provision, okay? Or a supply that has been prepared beforehand. Hallelujah. And it is anticipating in advance waiting for you to hold it waiting for you to behold it hallelujah hallelujah so when god says that i know the thoughts that i have toward you and he says these thoughts are not evil but they are of peace he simply is saying that i me god i have prepared hallelujah things that are supposed to help you enjoy. So I hear you. Hallelujah. I have prepared. Every time I have you on my mind. I am working something good out for you. And this thing is not coming. It is not delaying. Matter of fact. It is waiting for you. In your tomorrow. Hallelujah. Say tonight. I hold my miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to understand that nothing gets God by surprise. Absolutely nothing. Nothing gets God by surprise. Everything that happens in your life, 
God already is aware. Hallelujah. Say God is aware of my challenges. Say God is aware of my trouble. God is aware of this situation and is well able to turn it around. Say he is committed to turning it around in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Provision. Provision. Hallelujah. I follow him. Provision also means a process of planning and preparing and supplying substances. Okay? That are required in advance. In other words, God planned before you came on the earth. Are you following? Before you were born. Everything that was supposed to aid your divine purpose on the earth here. God prepared it. He set it up as a package. He sent an angel with it on the earth. And then now you were conceived. When you came out from your mother's womb, all things were made ready for you. Say, I am living. Say, I am living a predetermined life. Come on, say, I am living a predetermined life. A preordained life. A predestinated life. Hallelujah. So you are not an accident on the earth here. Say, I'm not, a, I'm not a, an accident. Hallelujah. You are not an accident. Yes, God may seem to be busy, but he's never busy for you. There are so many people on the face of the earth that God is, act, you know, God doesn't manage, okay? Praise God. He's overseeing. Praise God. There are many angels that are running the errands for God in your life. And on the earth here. There are many divine, divine, divine persons. Praise God. That have been given. Hallelujah. And the root of these divine elements and divine persons and divine creatures. Is supposed to collide with you now. Say I hear you. I don't know if you're getting it. The root of the angelic is supposed to collide with you. Praise God. Are you following? Hallelujah. So when angels have been sent, you're supposed to encounter them. Many people encounter demons more than angels. Many people, believers, encounter more of the ancestors that died even before they were born than angels. Hallelujah. But by this teaching, I want to believe God. And I want you to receive the grace to encounter angels in the mighty name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The mystery of divine provision. Hallelujah. So God... Has, when he formed you, everything that was supposed to help you not survive, but live. Because many people are surviving. Supposed to help you live. And that, that word live is experiencing and expressing the Zoe life. When you talk about living scripturally, it's not just you waking up in the morning and saying, Oh, I'm not dead. You're feeling yourself. No. It is experiencing and expressing the Zoe life. The good kind of life. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says in the book of John chapter 1. That the life, hallelujah, the life became light unto men. Praise God. The life of Jesus became light unto men. Are you following? So he was sent on earth here. And he died on the cross. You having received him, carry his life within you. And because you carry his life, you are walking in the light. You are not groping. You are not walking under the shadow of darkness. You are walking under the permission of the Zoe kind of life. They are here. Tonight, God will rise up for you 
in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I say, God will rise up for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So God has created the entire universe to depend on him. Are you following? There are ordinances that the moon observes in honor of God. There are statutes that the elements that are physical and spiritual must keep so that they may be in alignment with God. There is an order that God has superimposed as law over the entire creature. Say, I hear you. Hallelujah. And everything is supposed to work and function in accordance to that order. When God speaks and says, let there be, that was creation. He was summoning things from where they were in the spirit and commanding them by the force of the word to appear in the physical. Praise God. But as they appeared, they were not to appear and disappear. They were to appear and begin to move according to the already predetermined order of God on the earth. Say, so I hear you. So everything was positioned in its own position. When man was created, his position was in the garden of Eden. Hallelujah. Say garden of Eden. Come on, say garden of Eden. Man was positioned in the garden of Eden. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that he was there what was his assignment? Huh? Somebody help me. What was the assignment of man in the garden? Huh? Everybody is just murmuring, but okay, you're not murmuring, but you're whispering. What was the assignment of God of man in the garden of Eden? Students help me. Yes. Huh? To, to tend. Praise God. So he was there to keep the order of God. So that everything that functions goes in the order of God. Are you getting me? Hallelujah. So the presence of man was the presence of God in the garden of Eden. Say, so I hear you. So everything around man was to function in the order of God in honor of man. Say so everything in my life will function in the order of God and in honor of me. <laughs> Say the mystery of divine supply. Hallelujah. So he created and everything was meant inside everything that is physical, physically visible, and those that are not physically visible, the invisible ones, inside them, there was a demand. Okay? There was an element. Praise God. There were things inside them that coexist to command them, to summon them, to go in according to specific divine allocated patterns. The following. So the animals were to behave in such a manner. The trees were supposed to behave in this manner. In the garden of Eden. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing? Say I hear you. Say tonight. Everything in my life must function in my honor and in according to the order of God. Hallelujah. So the dependence that God imposed and put in every element, the divine dependence, okay? Because you see, people want, many people want to be independent. Hallelujah. But you see, your independence outside God is only a submission to the powers and the forces and dominion of the kingdom of darkness. 
I've seen people saying that, well, you know, our, our, my, my body, my, my, huh? my, my body, my choice. So somebody wants to go and change his sex orientation to become something. And I know I'm on Facebook. They may, they may pull it down. But, you know, this is what happens, okay? That you deciding to live your original God ordained self and enter something else. You are submitting yourself under a demonic force. You are not gaining your independence. You are entering slavery well, well. <laughs> so I hear you. So the dependence that God put in every creature is actually supposed to give him glory. Say glory say glory number two is supposed to order worship say worship the dependence that you okay feeling an urge to lean on god to desire god to pray reverence to god hallelujah pouring adoration and he's doing well you rise up and say ha god i thank you and you look around and God receives honor from that hallelujah say I hear you the mystery of divine provision hallelujah praise the Lord so God wants to fetch worship from everything around him and everyone around him in the book of Isaiah chapter 43 and verse number 21 Bible says, these people have I formed for myself. So God has formed you not for another thing but for himself. The life you are living today must be life for God. Hallelujah. Your marriage must be a marriage for God. Your business should be a business for God. Are you getting it? When you get children and kids, they should be for God. These people have I formed for myself that they shall show forth my praise. So you being formed for God now provokes worship. Hallelujah. Sometimes you may go through battles. But if you turn around those battles and begin to blame God, then you are submitting yourself to defeat. But you look and behold the battle and say, Lord, I thank you because you have reigned victorious. You are the king of glory. There is no battle you cannot win. You, you, cannot, you cannot be defeated. There is no war that you, you have not made me to fall in. Therefore, I rise in your power. God looks at you and says, Ah, uh -uh, this one is my son. I am well placed of him. And he begins to get happy. He is worshipped. When God is worshipped, he gets excited. When God is worshipped, hallelujah, praise the Lord, he gets excited. Say, I hear you. So worship excites God. Worship gives God pleasure. And he spent time to ensure that order, specific orders were in place so that everything may give him worship. Say, I hear you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the book of Genesis chapter number 2 from verse number 10 Genesis chapter number 2 and from verse number 10 the Bible says that and the river went out of Eden to water the garden and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. Hallelujah. Became into four heads. Verse number 11. The name of the first is Pison. Hallelujah. Pison. The name of the first is Pison, which is that is that is it. Uh, Pison, that is it. Okay. Huh? That is it which compasseth the whole land of Havila where there is God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus Christ. 
By this teaching, you receive your gold in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the name Pishon means to disperse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The mystery of divine supply. That by divine supply, God has created avenues through which wealth is dispersed in your life. Hmm. You're wondering, be like, uh-uh. Wealth? <laughs> yes. I want to be wealthy. You? You want to be poor? Blessed are you poor. You want to be poor? Huh? <laughs> Even the poor, the Bible says now they are blessed. Meaning they are changing status. Your poverty in the spirit qualifies you to change status. You become blessed. The Bible doesn't say that poorer are the poor. <laughs> eh? Hallelujah. And that poor is actually poor in the spirit, which means needy. You are in need of divine fulfillment. You want to acquire grace every single day. So you are in need. Not that you are poor, not that you are poor because of... Uh, are you following? Good. Now, verse number uh, 12. And the gold that... The gold... And the gold of that land is good. Say the gold... Of this land is good. I'm going to teach you some things today. By the time you get up, because you get your business, you say, Ah, uh -uh, my business. Now I want the river Pishon to come round about you, to surround you, so that I may be dispersed with wealth. Onyx. Who knows Onyx? Ever seen gold? Ever touched gold? Leave that fake watch, you'll be like, Ah, the dear corner. Huh? That. If, <laughs> When you carry little gold, even you, you become dangerous to the society. People begin to look for you. Hmm? Just small, small gold. Now it has been discovered scientifically that a man inside your body, you have gold. Inside your body, yes. Man is wondering. 0 0.22 grams of your body is gold. In other words, your worth is more than what you're earning. And that's why I'm going to teach you on how God will supply. You are more worth than that. <sighs> okay. Let's continue. Verse 13. The name of the second river is Gihon. Hallelujah. Is Gihon. Or Gishon. Gihon or Gishon simply means a stream, okay? In other words, the flow of refreshment. Hallelujah. I'll come back to this river's letter as we continue. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 14. We are told the name of the third is Hidakel. And the other one is Euphrates. Hallelujah. So now, these four rivers, they flowed around the garden of Eden number one to water Eden and number two to expose wealth to disperse resources okay into Eden praise God to bring provoke excellency hallelujah a unique ambience a glory so that when Adam wakes up, when he looks and beholds, everything around him is good. I prophesy over your life in the mighty name of the Lord. Everything around you begins to turn good in the mighty name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, you see, one of the things that I want you to understand as we study this subject is that Satan is a master of all adversity. Okay? What is Satan? Satan is like he went to school in primary during our days. Eh? And he did art and craft. So he's very crafty. <laughs> Are you getting this? Satan is what? Uh -uh, I want to see your mouth. You see? Everybody. I'm... Satan is what? If you are keeping silent, I am suspecting you. Satan is what? It's crafty. Hallelujah. 
And the craft of Satan is in opposition against the glory of God. Anywhere God wants to receive glory from men, Satan will come and try to abort it. Try to quench it. Try to break it. Say, so I hear you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So one of the areas that Satan prospers against believers is in the place of provision. Okay? I'm teaching about the mystery of divine provision. Hallelujah. One of the areas that the enemy stands and functions and he has dispatched a lot of his demons and spirits and every day he rises up with innovations even sometimes through the agencies of men is in the place of provision. Say, so I hear you. Hallelujah. I'm going to teach you how it happens, okay? Now, this is what happens now. When, 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 when you depend on God, okay, you are acknowledging the sovereignty of God. You are causing God to be excited through worship. Hallelujah. You are acknowledging him that God is the owner of all things. Hallelujah. And you are also, in other words, confessing that all that he has is yours. Okay? So number one, understand that God is a father. God is a father. Okay? So God is the source of you, even the very life that you are having. Your breath. He's Abba. Praise God. He's the source and sustainer. So I hear you. Hallelujah. So when you're seeing here that Alpha and Omega beginning and the end my life belongs to you. Hallelujah. We are acknowledging that we don't have lives of our own. All that we have, it belongs to God. Matter of fact, Jesus Christ died that we may live. So we received him as we confessed him in our hearts and we received him in our lives. Hallelujah. Even your life it is, belongs to? Come on somebody. Maisha yako ni nani? You know we used to sing a song kitambo. Maisha yangu mimi ni mpe nani leo? Maisha yangu mimi na mpa bana tawale Tawala bana, bana tawala, bana tawala. This one is like the fifth generation, you don't know, 5G. Hey, mambo, ya 0G ya mjui, before M-Pesa came. Yo, tulikuwa tunayimba in 2002. Huh? Was 202, eh? Yes, you sing 202. Long time ago. Siyo sayi, mnajua tu ile ya, I am a chosen generation. Eh? This other stuff about Naimba Imba Bana swear. I've been blessed. Hallelujah. So God is your father. And as your father, what do fathers do? Fathers mentor. Fathers protect. Fathers provide. Okay? The mystery of divine provision. Fathers mentor. Fathers protect. And fathers provide. Hallelujah. So in the place of mentorship, mentorship means that it is, a, it is a platform to acquire the skill, to acquire the ability, praise God, through study and through learning from your father. In other words, your father is coaching you. So God is coaching you through his word. Through his servant, me. I'd be like, ah, daddy, okay, good. You have failed. You will repeat if you are complaining. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm teaching about this mystery. And I pray to God. I told God, give me grace to teach. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, he mentors you. Meaning, he says that I am. Huh? I do what? I am the God 
that teaches you. What does God teach you? To profit. Okay? Ah, say so you are teaching good. Come on, actually, we've said that you are teaching good. To the glory of God. So God mentors you in the place of business so that you may be profitable. Okay? Are you following? He mentors you. He trains you. Hallelujah. He shows you the way on how to succeed. Say, so I hear you. Hallelujah. <laughs> God, lift up your hands and say, Father, I thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name. God, in the place of mentoring, God deposits eh? not just abilities, but he deposits disciplines and he imposes in you a desire to pursue them. Okay? So when Jeremiah was born, he's told that, you know, before you were formed, I made you and I already ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. There are people who are ordained to be evangelists. We are people who are ordained to be business people, teachers. Hallelujah. Doctors, they were ordained. And now the ordination in you, for it to find expression, it requires provision. Okay? That very ordination that you are born, for it to find expression on the earth, it needs what? Provision. Say provision. So a child, a small young like that boy run down there, maybe like two or three years, and inside him there is grace, there is ability to play football nicely and be better than Cristiano Ronaldo. But minus training, that gift cannot find expression. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay. In Ephesians chapter number 4 and verse 8. Ephesians chapter number 4. The Bible says, Wherefore, he says, When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts to man. Praise God. He gave gifts to man. Say, so I hear you. He gave what? Same gifts. Uh -uh. Must my gift. <laughs> if we expire, I'll use this one. Of some of my sons here can. Hallelujah. So he gave gifts to men. I want us to look into Matthew chapter number 25 and verse number 15. To the glory of God. Matthew chapter number 25 and verse 15. The Bible says, And unto one he gave five talents. And to another two. And another one to every man according to his several ability. And straight away took his journey. So before, or before God relocates you from the spirit realm to come as a baby. He has already packaged, number one, gifts. Say my gifts. Number two, he has packaged talents. Say talents. So what are, what are gifts? Gifts are spiritual abilities. Say my spiritual abilities. Say my spiritual abilities. Talents are natural abilities. Say my natural abilities. The capacity within you that can bring you out Okay, and make you perform some things that will attract finances. Okay, is a talent. Huh? So you have talented football, foot, foot, footballers. You have talented boxers, talented wrestlers, talented 
in the discipline of of games and sports. Okay? Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah, you cannot tell me you are a talented husband so you have to you marry four wives. That's a demon, okay? Like those things we used to do in school where we bring food. It's hot and then you eat. So the first one, <laughs> huh? how many were in food eating competition? Hot, hot food, rice and cocoa. You imagine you are the first one. So I came to discover there was a young man. I used to wonder how do these guys survive? That, the way he's hot. The young man. So I saw the way they were behaving. Before he goes to the table, he has um, a tube of um, Colgate or uh, close up. And he smears inside the mouth on the tank. When he comes, he's taking that thing and he doesn't get hurt. I was like, ah, these people are skilled. Okay, I'm losing somebody. Eh? <laughs> so God has created you and inside you he has packaged gifts. Hallelujah. He has packaged gifts. And on top of that gift, he has given you talents. Say my talents. Hallelujah. Now the gift is what spurs up your ability. Okay? It spurs up what? A gift steers up your ability. Okay? But as I'll, I'll teach you about this. And then a, 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 a talent, okay? It gives you expression. It gives you like, uh, it announces you. Praise God. So when you are talented and you're gifted, you're better. Say you're better. I don't know if I'm drinking. So talents require training. Okay? What do talents require? Development of skill through hard work. Okay? Gifts require impartation. For them to grow, they require what? Say impartation now. Mm -hmm. Good, 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 good. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So the enemy wanted us is that he's so mad when uh, a believer stands up and calls on God or acknowledges God as the source and sustainer. As a father. Hallelujah. Praise God. So because of that, he comes to sabotage and fight. So that your relationship with your father may be frustrated. May be strained. Okay? So that some of you may be full of doubts and all this about if really God is my father. Why am I going through this stuff? Ever gone through some stuff and asked if God really was really your father? I know people go through stuff and they'll be like, ah, really, if God, that testimony that pastor shared, is God really for me in this thing? Is, if, if he's really my father, why am I going through this stuff? Hallelujah. And there are so many people, I've had people who call me sometimes, they'll be like, ah, if God really loved me, why did my mother die of cancer? They don't know about the love of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Your mother will not die of cancer in Jesus name. I say your mommy will not die of cancer in Jesus name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So what the enemy does is that he frustrates and strains that, strains that relationship. But now inside God, there is a provision of him standing up for you, not just as a father, but also as the king. In Psalm chapter number 24, the Bible says, The earth and the fullness therein belongs to God. Hallelujah. So God, as the king, he has a domain. Say domain. Say domain now. Come on, say domain. As a, as a king, he has established his territorial domain. He has put up structures and laws by his word. Okay? Which obey him. Praise God. And this affects even the area of provision. Hallelujah. He rules over all. 
He rules over. Say overall. Say God rules over everything. Say God rules overall. Overall means all things minus nothing. Say all things minus nothing. Hallelujah. So God is ruling over every situation you are going through. Praise God. He rules over everything minus nothing. And because of that rule, when the enemy rises up to frustrate your relationship with him, you can stand up in the presence of God as a son of the king. A son of the king means that all laws are protecting you. Every law is protecting you. Number two, it means that even if you have not done well, God's mercy is toward you. Hallelujah. God's mercy means that he has compassion toward you that changes his mind concerning the very judgment that you are deserving. So I hear you. So some of you did some things and came to God and you are feeling guilty. No. When you repented, it ended. Say, when I repented, it ended. Hey, that sounds like a tongue twister. Eh? Say, when I repented, it ended. Some of you, every time a struggle comes around about you, the enemy brings the idea and memory of something that happens eight years ago. And you'll be like, ah, oh, I think God is punishing me. No nonsense. God does not punish you, okay? Hello? God loves you, okay? What does God do? He loves you. Praise God. He loves you and he wants to redeem you out of that guilt. Say, so I hear you. Hallelujah. So he's the king also. So as a father, he wants to ensure that his children are comfortable on the earth. Okay? They are living well. Okay? And on the other hand, as a king, he wants to be adored. To be worshipped. Hallelujah. So Satan, when he stands, I've said that the devil one of the areas that he has invested heavily to fight the church and the children of God is opposing, opposing what? Provision. Bless God. He opposes provision. That's why you be, some of you ask, uh -uh, why is it that wicked men are actually, you know, just suddenly he's building here, he's building there, minus loan, and he's doing well. And I'm praying and fasting and I don't know what's happening. You ask such questions. How many of you ask that, such questions? Eh? That you are in campus with that girl B and the girl B or lady B or okay, girl B is okay so that they don't make reference. Girl B was sleeping around with every lecturer so she was given good grades and now she's working with an international company. She's driving well, number of machines. Every after two years she has a very big car she buys, she has, but she has, she's doing well. She's married. And you, you are waiting on God. Some of you, you are like, ah, we are now even the Christian believers. Christian union. We are the leaders. Now, here you are. And then you're asking, is God really unfair? Why is it that when people sin, they prosper? When we hold on righteousness, we struggle. I'll teach you how to escape that, okay? Are you ready? <laughs> this teaching is meant to liberate your mind and give you the ability to rise up and apprehend what belongs to you. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 16 and verse number 9, the Bible says that a great and effectual door is open unto me, but there are many adversaries. There are many adversaries. For a great and the picture is open unto me. A great day the picture is open unto me. And there are many adversaries. Hallelujah. 
So adversaries means these are enemies. Can you pull down the microphone that are wireless, uh, that, 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 are, that we they are coded, okay? They are distracting. Good. Hallelujah. So a great door is open, but there are many adversaries. Are you following? So an adversary is an enemy who has sworn to oppose your destiny. Okay? And he feels good when you're not doing good. When you're not doing well. When a business opportunity comes up to change your life, he rises up and conspires against you. He may go legally or he may come physically. Hallelujah. Praise God. I follow him. So when he comes legally, he manipulates the laws and goes into the course of the spirit and he acquires huh? what does he acquire? I'm trying to be careful because we have a lawyer in our midst and some lawyers so I need to have good legal language. What does he acquire? Those documents you get from court to oppose people from doing this. What, do, what, what, what are they called? Huh? So now everybody's looking. Come on, help me now. Oh, I'm online. Sorry, let me try to be composed and uh, with the... <laughs> Hallelujah. So the enemy can go and acquire some things to come and oppose you. Okay? Legal documents. Some of this comes up as in form of accusation. So some things have been signed in the spirit. Restraining order. Okay? Uh, Pastor Beryl is now, the spirit of God is now more on her. Give me another one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the enemy will get that and then number what he does is that when he, he, he secures it you you are here waiting because of the promise. So what happens is that the following day before you go you find the person that was supposed to help you is now accusing you. Hello? Some of you have dreamt that people are really accusing you and you didn't know that this was a demonic document that was acquired to frustrate your pursuit in life. Say tonight, every accusation, every document that has been secured in spiritual courts to frustrate my supply, I blot it out by the blood of Jesus. A job is coming, a business is coming, then suddenly, that's when you begin to have dreams. You are walking barefooted in the village. Oh, guy, guy, guy. Village. You are walking barefooted. And you just, huh? Strange, strange dreams are imposed in your dream realm. Tonight, lift up here and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, any stranger in my dream, I arrest him. And I command him out in the name of Jesus. Say, any stranger in my dream realm, I arrest you. I command you out in the name of Jesus Christ. The enemy causes people to dream. It's when opportunities are opening, that's when you dream. Some of you, you dream. Uh, somebody came to sleep with you. I follow you. Some of you, you are a lady and a lady comes to sleep with you. Those are deep covenants. Praise God. It is an initiation to a place of failure. Suddenly, the one, the money that you are waiting for, ah, it begins to have hiccups, 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 and suddenly it all expires. You'd be like, ah, now maybe that was not for, for you know, God, maybe it was not for me. Maybe God knows nonsense. All those words that you give yourself for solace they are not the right biblical words rise up and fight for your opportunity 
you are dreaming a strange dream rise up in prayer hallelujah rise up in prayer you are a child of the king god is your father you have a divine access anytime you wake up even if it's 3 a.m 4 a.m anytime god's attention is toward you when you had an opposition go to him plead for mercy tell god i want this opposition to expire tell god i am visiting tonight by your ability of the spirit into the very place location where that defilement was performed and i blot it out tell god i am counseling the effect of this evil dream on the vengeance i'm pursuing because many people when they dream they wake up and they be like wishing then something happens during the day and you'll be like oh i think i dream about it some of you dream and then you forget huh? how many of you dream and forget at least grace to remember you're dreaming in the mighty name of the lord you're dreaming and you're forgetting huh? that's not in the order of god daniel the bible said that he even remembered the dream of the king e-e. me i can remember your dream i can look at you and say hey you dream this and this Praise God. You have to get that grace. I follow him. This thing of you sleeping at ah, me, Pastor, <laughs> Miss Yotangi, that is a, is a journey towards hopelessness. Because dreams are gates, they are gates, they are windows that you are given specific glances into your future. Your future is bright. But for you to walk circumspectively, hallelujah. You need to be sure of that future. So God will present it to you in a dream. When a battle comes to you in dreams, you know, there is something ahead of me that the enemy wants to pull down. You rise up in warfare. I break it. I break it. You viciously attack it in the spirit. Some of you have a very dangerous dream and you're waking up that day is when now you're feeling hungry. You see, instead of fasting, now you're feeling very extremely hungry. You have to fast to, to neutralize that demonic attack. But then here, the enemy imparts in you a spirit of hunger. He wants you to eat. So you wake up in the kitchen and everything is ready. You find kaugali kalibaki jana unakachamsha na na ni tamu sana na pokuwa sema hey I've never felt kumbe is demonic the enemy is trying to divert you who are useless so that you don't tackle the thing he planted against you refuse hallelujah to be attracted to the things of the enemy and rise up and fight for your destiny because your supply is under confrontation the enemy want to subdue you and take over your supply takes over your provision. Hallelujah. Praise God. Judges chapter number 6. The Bible says, when the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites, because the power of the Midianites was so oppressive. Judges chapter number 6. Because the power of the median was so oppressive the israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountains mountain clefts caves and strongholds whenever the israelites planted their crops the medianites and amalekites and the other eastern people invaded the country i command tonight anybody that has invaded your country your territory of supply we are arresting them today. I say we are arresting them today. Anybody invading your country, your territory to impoverish you, to oppress you, I command them to live in the mighty name of the Lord. Shakata bazakataya. Verse 3, the Bible says that whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and the Eastern people invaded the country. Verse 4. They camped on the land and ruined the crops, the way to Gaza, and did not spare a living thing of, for Israel, neither sheep, nor cattle, nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible 
I'm reading an IV, okay? So let me read this one. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count them or their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Ravage means to take hold of the resources that are helping you and cause you to be in uttermost continuous lack. Some of you, you don't know, you are not aware. End month comes, you are wishing. You know the people that wish? When I was in school, I was told that wishes, if wishes were horses, then beggars <laughs> will do what? Huh? Beggars will ride. So wishes are not kingdom solutions. Okay? But let's pray. You wishing does not qualify you to receive from God. I know the Bible says that he is able to do all things. Eh? So thinking, but now I know wishing is not thinking. Eh? <laughs> wishing is not thinking. What is wishing? Go and Google. Oh, you are looking at me and be like, I'm not in a grammatical class, so I mean, eh? This is grammar, or it is, uh, I want me to give you definitions. Go Google, eh? I allow you that. <laughs> so the enemy wants to pull down your supply, wants to take over your resources. This phone, I command it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. The devil is pursuing. When he, he knows that when he holds your resources, God will not get glory. That's why we have a doctrine that people are arising against prosperity in the house of God. So that when you preach prosperity, you are like you are doing an error. Okay? And there are some who are now preaching prosperity under the influence of the enemy, not according to the doctrine of God. And those ones are prospering say tonight, God will teach me to prosper. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, God as a, as a father and uh, God as king, he has made all things, okay? And all these things, he has made them available for your life. Okay? So, they are available for my life. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. Philippians 4 19. Hallelujah. After this, you will be like e -E. Give us a um, King James Version, please. King James Version. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 1 and verses number 3. Are you being blessed? Kabisa, kabisa. Okay. According as his divine power has given unto us all things. According unto, let's read all of us. Please read in your screens or your Bibles. Now, one, two, let's go. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and goodness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue okay so in other words god has exposed okay inside his glory when you access his divine knowledge his divine power praise god you find all the deposits of the virtues of the resources 
that have been allocated for you to rise and function easily in your destiny passage. You're following? So he has given to us. So he has given me. Hallelujah. So God as king and God as a father, he has given you. He has made it available for you. Praise God. Philippians 4.19, let's read again. Philippians 4.19. Bible says, huh? But my God shall supply. My God shall provide all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The mystery of divine provision. So what does God supply? Number one, God supplies things that are physically within the reach and contest of man's domain. Okay. For example, you were born, you've gone to school. Hallelujah. And you've finished school. And you've taken a course, maybe like teaching. But there is no work. Hallelujah. You qualify to be paid by government while you are teaching. But opportunities are not coming your way. Then suddenly you are in prayer. And an advert is printed or published in the newspapers. You apply. But you are applying with faith. Okay? You are believing God that is not in my qualification. Why? Because I know the candidates may, may be very many. Okay? So among us, those that will be selected, I want to be part of it. So suddenly your name is picked. And then you get a job. I'm following that process. So look at it this way, you see. These are physical things that are within your reach. They are in your context. But they were denied you because of opportunity. Okay? Hallelujah. Say, I hear you. Praise God. They were denied you because the enemy stood against the doors of opportunity. But when you rose up in prayer and you believed God and you lifted up a battle cry, opportunities began to open. I pray opportunities will begin to open for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Say opportunities will begin to open for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Bible says that it is not Huh? let me paraphrase it in the book of Ecclesiastes it says the, the time and chance happens to all I pray time and chance will happen to you I say time and chance will happen to you in the name of Jesus Christ time and chance will happen to you in the name of Jesus Christ some of you a chance time happened but a chance did not happen Say, this is my season. This is my time. Hallelujah. But the season and time being in alignment for you does not qualify you for a miracle. You will need an extra thing. Okay? It's called tan. Say my tan. Everybody stand up. Okay? Hallelujah. You see you are standing. Okay? Praise God. Some are still seated. It's fine. Praise God. You see, we are in the course of service and I'm teaching. You're supposed to be seated. But because I am the one, okay, with the microphone, and I'm the one in charge teaching, I've told you, and you've left everything, and you're standing up on your feet. What does it mean? When your turn arrives, okay? Praise God. When it is your turn, it does not matter who is on the chair, who is the office, you will arise. Pray for you tonight in the name of the Lord. 
receive the grace to arise I say receive the grace to arise say tonight I receive the grace to arise in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah sit down thank you take your chance so every physical thing that is within your reach in your domain and your context you will receive it in the name of the Lord some of you you have certificates and you're looking for a job receive that job in the name of the Lord I said receive that job in the mighty name of the Lord some of you you are of good age and you are believing God for husband or wife receive the grace to marry I said receive the grace in the mighty name of the Lord let the turn come your way I command your turn now you celebrated with your neighbors but now it is your turn now is your turn now is your turn now is your turn congratulations in the name of the Lord I say congratulations in the name of Jesus Christ number two what does God supply things that are far reaching but in the soul of a man they're also called desires <coughs> hallelujah psalm chapter number 21 psalm 21 verses number one and two the king shall join in thy strength O lord and in thy salvation how greatly shall he rejoice psalm 21 verse 1 and 2 thou hast given him his heart's desire and has not withheld the request of his lips Hallelujah. some of you desire to go abroad and when you look into your family there is nobody that ever maybe even ever crossed the border of this nation receive this grace I said receive this grace you will not go abroad like that man who went into the plane and fell somewhere on the meter store away yeah? you know be hidden in the cargo you go seated everything paid for and you enter where you do business you come back laughing and in the name of Jesus Christ say I will not be a store away store away store, yeah. store away huh? say my story what does it mean eh, this is Kenya eh? you know Kenya you explain everything some you know story let's go somebody who steals himself and goes and enters plan by where the tires are and then he hides there so he fell in London eh? yes huh? you're following eh? do your research you'll find it okay <laughs> hallelujah so you will legally go, you will not be like a runaway, you will go, we have other, they go into ship, into boats, inflated boats, and then they cross into Europe. You, you are on, you, got, you, you carry your passport, you go seated where? Legally enter, legally do business, legally come out, earning your bonga points. Mm, better, better in the name of the Lord. Say mine shall be better. Say mine shall be better in the name of Jesus Christ when God opens a door no man can close Revelation chapter 3 verse number 8 Bible says see I have placed an open door before you which no man can close I declare in the mighty name of the Lord let no man close your door you missed a good place to say amen I say amen for myself let no man close your door the doors that is opening doors of supply those of provision, I declare no man shall be able to close them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
So God supplies. Is well able to supply the things that far that are far reaching, but are in your desire, in your heart. They're also called desires. Okay. So the Bible says that you have met the desires of the king, the heart's desire. Anything you're thinking that it is good to have and you have desired it, receive it in the name of the Lord. I say receive it in the name of the Lord. May God supply that also in Jesus' name. Some of you, you have worn fake ornaments for a long time. You begin to put on nice, nice fashion. Huh? Uh, ladies. You know, I saw in the television one time. Kuliko na wig. Yama konge. Wig. Wig ya saisol. Misha ona kitika mayo. Huh? Hello? Wig ya saisol. Show na wig ya saisol. Huh? Ukitani hivi hiyo body ko still. Kicho ni naenda TV na hii mesimama too straight. Huh? Receive grace for you man in Jesus name. I see you putting Brazilian and all those other things in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Kuna ito wana waneka na ito aje. This one eh, na ito aje. Angel, umeka hivi. Because ume abagain from 500 umekufunye to 50 na umekwekea fake. After a few days inaosha vombe meenda. Ama ingine nafanya kucha inaosa. Now you are desiring good good ones. Receive it in Jesus name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your desire is a language that God hears. When you desire, God will give. Say, when I desire, God will supply. In Psalm 20, verse 1, the Bible says, The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you. The Lord send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. The Lord remember all your offerings and accept your bond sacrifice. The Lord grant you according to your own heart's desire and fulfill your counsel. So God can grant your desire. Do you have a desire? Receive it right now in the name of the Lord. Desires are languages that are the spirit realm here. They listen. When you desire, it shall be given. When it's a godly desire, go supply. May God supply in the name of the Lord. You have a desire to drive a Range Rover. You only had a, you don't have, even have a bicycle. God will hear it and it will answer in the name of the Lord. Receive, receive, receive in Jesus' name. Receive it right now in the name of the Lord. Receive it in the name of Christ. You have desire to have good money after every end month and you're not qualified to work for that job. Receive your heart's desire. That people will favor you. People will now begin to think for you. Of you and people will consider you to go and be employed in higher places that are beyond your certificates in the name of the Lord. Receive, receive the desires. I say receive the desires of your heart. Receive the desires of your heart in the mighty name of the Lord. You have given him his heart's desire and you have not withheld the request of his lips. As you declare, I receive. It is permanent in the mighty name of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Some of you, you are living in Mkuru Kayapa. You desire to stay in Yahweh Estate. Receive that desire. And you shall not go like a house help. You know, you have people who go to Nyayo, they are staying there like house help. Eh? It's good. Okay? But now you own your own. Say, I own my own. God can perform beyond. But is in your desire. Hmm? I've told God I want to stay some good place now. This thing of me coming with mud, mud on shoes and wiping everywhere, I've said now this must end. So I'm on a negotiating table with God. I'm saying, God, I'm saying I know my ancestors never lived there, but I'm your servant. 
you will not withhold you will not withhold the request of my lips Hallelujah. receive your own in the name of Jesus Christ what God supplies number three God supplies things that are beyond your comprehension not just far reaching but beyond your comprehension in Genesis chapter number 18 and verses number 14 when the Bible says when Sarah was 90 years old Abraham was 100 years old they had given up on getting a baby and the Bible says that they were visited by the angels hallelujah and so the angels began to reveal to Abraham what they were going to do and the Bible says that they say that in a season coming a time like this Sarah, your wife, shall be carrying her own baby. Sarah laughed. When Sarah laughed, the Bible says that the angel asks, is anything too hard? Is anything too hard? Hallelujah. Praise God. Is anything too hard for me, for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto you. According to the set time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Sarah shall have a son. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 verse number 11. The Bible says that Sarah judged him faithful. Who had promised? Hallelujah. The womb of Sarah was literally dead. Sarah was beyond menopause times three times two. That he questioned God, shall I have desire for my husband, seeing that I'm too old for him? <laughs> Hallelujah. It was beyond her comprehension. It was not even a desire. She was, at 90, you are thinking about how to rest well in the bosom of God. But God says, you are now, your set time to conceive has come. Far beyond your reach. God is able to supply that also. Is also able to supply in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, may God supply, may God provide beyond the oppos the physical opposition that you've been facing, beyond the things that you thought would never happen. May God supply for you in Jesus' name. In Luke chapter 1, verse 37, the Bible says that for with God, nothing shall be impossible. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Means God can turn your impossibilities into possibilities. He can supply beyond what you thought he could do. You know, as a child of God, you have to get to a place where now you don't just settle for small, small food. Eh? Hello? One last prayer. You need to set up a program and say, well, um, in the morning, consistently, okay? In the morning, I'll eat uh, grapes. Not grapes. Oh, well, let me say, I'll eat grapes. But then at around uh, 10, I'll drink a glass of blueberry juice. Then you say, at two, I'll eat huh? chicken that has what? I don't know. Cashew nuts. No. The way they separate. Huh? Am I a fish and I don't have red snapper or white snapper? You eat that. That is your lunch. Okay? In the, in the, at around six you drink nice porridge in the evening you eat a banana and you sleep I see Louis now troubled black kai 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 usiku ni lale nja ya banana that's the rich man's meal eh? and you eat it consistently you choose what you eat what Banner square. See, you get to a bed. 
kuna katibu baba ya sukuma you know ushajua mtu akiwa na akiwa na akiwa maskini ana anakula sana mkate mmoja yeye ana mwezi yote na anataka nusu sasa hivi kwa megapi tatu your story and everything where yani unakula mpaka ongeze kg mara moja pup 7 kg imeongezeka bana swe jioni ukula ugali unakula ni kama unahama kama una, ulikuwa na hama alafu akasema hii unga <laughs> inabaki asema no 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 pika ugali ni kule <laughs> hakuna nafasi yake that's why people's bodies uh, like mine i'm trying i'm trying eh trying is i've seen people's bodies they look like capital d and b i don't know what sign is that in mathematics or physics capital d and then like b like so una ka una una ka because of the kind of hallelujah you get to a place where you say ah, i'm a child of god now i want to you believe god see just like you're praying okay and as you um working on your mental health your physical health is also good if you don't treat your body well your relevance will be it will expire before you finish your assignment on earth so you need to be eating well i pray grace for supply in the area of your food in jesus name this thing of eating sukuma for sewage for seven days mfulizo baka breakfast tena unasema ile itakula tu ile ilibaki that thing leaves you in jesus name So God is able to do things that are beyond, okay? Okay, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Are we are we, are we getting blessed? Kabisa kabisa. Ama sema eh pastor amejeka kuongea. Hallelujah. So in the place of divine supply, number one you must understand that God is the source, okay? Number two you must understand that he appoints and convenes avenues of supply to man he appoints and convenes avenues of supply to man some of the avenues of supply are like your job your business okay your partner your friend minimally you need to have at least four four avenues of supply just like the rivers that were around eden okay every river has it had its own work we'll start that in another um, topic because I'm trying to rush in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Number three, understand that these avenues of supply they are there to help your day to day life, okay? For you to function effectively in your assignment and purpose. That's why God has given you these avenues of supply. Okay? Praise God. They are also there to give you opportunity to cultivate to cultivate your future. So when you are working and you want to secure your future, you can cultivate your future by paying tithe, okay? And by seeding. Praise God. Jesus Christ is teaching he says that a man cannot give what he doesn't have. Okay? A man can only give what has been given him by God. Praise God. So when God gives you, when God supplies, when God opens you and exposes you to an avenue of supply, know that the enemy will try to contest with that avenue. So it requires that you stand by the word of God and ensure that legally you are upright with the spiritual laws by giving, by sowing, and by tithing. You secure your tomorrow by that. We have people who are so selfish. And the Bible says that there are those who withhold much. They tend up to poverty. You know, this thing of listening and watching YouTube about tithing, it will not help you. Oh, tithing was a law for Old Testament. Tithing, who said it was a law of Old Testament? 
anybody here who thinks that thing was a law for the Old Testament, lift up your hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord shall manifest in your life in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, he gives you that avenue to cultivate. Do you want a promotion? Then you can apply a spiritual law for you to hold that promotion. That's God. Hallelujah. So, this avenue of supply can help you to hold your tomorrow. Hallelujah. You're following? Praise the Lord. Number four, the avenue of supply are not necessarily there to meet your needs. This one is going to disappoint somebody, eh? Because you, all along, you have been thinking, that because of my job now, my needs are safe. Don't fix your mind on your business as an avenue, as, as a point of meeting your need, okay? It only helps you to run your life but we have some needs that will come in your life that your avenue of supply cannot hold. Okay? You must believe God. Praise God. For supernatural release. Hallelujah. For example, you are working and you are earning 200,000 shillings as a salary. And you are dreaming to have a house in Kleleshwa. Okay? You know, houses in such areas maybe go like 200 million. You also, you're going to have a house in that place, you need a, a very nice vehicle. Say vehicle. And not just one. You have stuff that you must pay. That 200 alone cannot even help pay your stuff. So you get a place and then you say, Lord, I want to hold this house in the spirit. And this is what you've given me. I now believe you to so begin to apply physical, spiritual laws, all of them in balance, okay? And call things that are not as though they are. Uh, uh, okay, good. Hallelujah. Are you being blessed? The mystery of divine supply. I want us to stand up on our feet as we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. So God has packaged his provision into two dimensions. Same are dimensions. God has packaged his provisions into two dimensions. Number one dimension is the place of need. Same a need. Same a need. Same a need now. Number two is blessing. Same a blessing. So he's told Abraham, in blessing, I'll bless you. Okay? In blessing, I'll bless you. And in multiplication, I will multiply you. Hallelujah. But for need, he says that our God will supply all your needs. So there is a dimension of need. Like an immediate solution for this situation. But there's a place where you are resting and resources are piling up for you. This is a place where Solomon found himself. The Bible says that he was so blessed. Isaac was there. The man was so blessed and exceedingly became great. This season, the kingdom of God is birthing people who are great. Greater destinies. Greater destinies. Greater lives in the mighty name of the Lord. This season, God will do something great in your life. He will supply beyond your, your expectation in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift up your hand right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. As you're lifting up your hand tonight, I want us to make a prayer in Jesus' name. Any devil, either by covenant 
or by its wickedness any devil that has found access to the avenues or gates of my supply to frustrate and to oppress me right now i bind that devil in the name of jesus christ lift up your hand begin to pray that prayer father lepradi akataya any devil any spirit that has found access to my avenue of supply to my gate of provision to frustrate and oppress me in the area of provision lord i bind it father i break it father i dis in the mighty name of the lord i destroy tonight any devil by covenant or by spiritual technology that has found out a way to frustrate me by sitting in the gauge in the doors of my supply and my provision i break his power i destroy his power in the mighty name of the lord demons and devils and spirits of sickness that rise up to contest for my praise blessings i bind you i break your power i destroy you in the mighty name of the lord every wasters that rise up to fight for my resources i break your power i bind your power i destroy you in the mighty name of the lord father we give you glory and we give you praise in jesus name we pray Lift up your hand right now in Jesus' name. Say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now. I lose. I lose. Every blessing. Every blessing. That has been withheld. That has been withheld. In the camp of the enemy. In the camp of the enemy. Every gate of supply. Every gate of supply. Under the custody. Under the custody. Of territorial powers. Of territorial powers. I take charge of you now. I take charge of you now. I take over you right now. I take over you right now. I take dominion. I take dominion. Over every realm of supply. Over every realm of supply. Over every avenue of supply. Over every avenue of supply. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Any covenant. Any covenant. Fighting, fighting. My supply, my supply. Right now, I break you. I break you. I break you. I break you. Any altar, any altar. Resisting, 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 resisting. I disgrace you. 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 Any compromise, every compromise, every compromise, every compromise. In my bloodline, in my bloodline, in my ancestry, in my ancestry. That has stood, that is standing, that is standing against my provision. Against my provision, I revoke you. I revoke you. I blot you out. I blot you out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every power. Every power. Every demonic power. Every demonic power. Of sabotage. Of sabotage. 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 I break your power. 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 Every strong man. Every strong man. Every strong man. Every strong man. Every strong man, every strong man, every strong man, every strong man, hold it, hold it, my help us, my help us, hold it, hold it, my divine help, my divine help, I break your power, I break your power, I break your power, I break your power, I bind you, I break you, I bind 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 you, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh yes, Lord. Any opportunity. Oh yes. That the enemy had snatched away from you. Oh yes. It is loose today. Amen. Say, Father. Father. Now. Now. Let my opportunity. Let my opportunity. That is in the hands of the enemy. That is in the hands of the enemy. Become so hot. Become so hot. To the end. To the end. To the end. That the enemy releases it. That the enemy releases it. To me. To me. Immediately. Immediately. Say every delay. Every delay. 
Every delay. Every delay. Every delay. Every delay. Every delay. Every delay. I bind you now. I bind you. I break your power. I break your power. I destroy you. I destroy you. Failure at the verge of breakthrough. Failure at the verge of breakthrough. In the place of my expectation. In the place of my expectation. And provision. And provision. I break your power. I break your power. I destroy you now. I destroy you now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father. Father, angels of God, angels of God, let them arise. Let them arise with packages for me. With packages for in me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of my Jesus. My life, my life is better. Is better. My life, my life is blessed. Is blessed. My life, my life is glorious. Is glorious. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody celebrate the Lord. Hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus with a clap offering. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As we say, coherent to our online audiences Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, coherent, God bless you so much. In Jesus' name, join us in our subsequent um, services in Jesus' name.